Well, hi, and welcome to my shop. And hey, I'm back in here much sooner than I expected. After uh, I mentioned in my last uh, quick video that I'd fallen off my bike and broke my collarbone. And I saw the uh, orthopedic surgeon yesterday. And the good news is I only cracked the bone. Did a fair bit of uh, damage to uh, soft tissues and stuff like that, as you might imagine. But I only cracked my collarbone. Consequently, look! Now, can't raise this hand above my shoulder for the next four weeks anyway. So, uh, but I can, I can work again. So, fantastic. I'm kind of lucky. I think that's what I, uh, that's what I should say. So, now, before we start on a record player, I've got two more unusual things to take a look at. We'll take a closer look at them. They're right here on my bench. Some of you are going to recognize these things. Some of you have already recognized them. So do me a favor. If you know what these things are right away, don't put a comment on the video. Let some other people take a shot at it if they're not sure. And take a few guesses at what these might be. So we'll take a close look. Just spend a couple minutes looking at these two things closely. And uh, then we'll get on with the record player. So let's do that. So here comes the first one. Just roll it around here. You can kind of look inside it. Okay. And look at the bottom of it here. You can see a couple wires sticking out the bottom. I think there really should be three there, and one of them is broken off. I think. You can kind of look, look up inside. There. So there you go. That's number one. Number two, some of you will know this immediately as to what this is. And uh, probably, uh, probably if you've never seen something like this, you could guess at it successfully. So here we are. Look, it's all full of some kind of, some kind of, I don't know what's inside this thing. Okay, so that's that. So again, if you already know what these things are, because you know, just like me, I know what they are. Don't uh, don't ruin the fun for others and throw a guess in right away. Although you know what you could do, you could you could add more information. I didn't say much about these things, but you might you might know, for instance, you might know why this exists or where its where its application is. So if that's the case. Then uh, go ahead and add some more information. So, but we're going to get back to actually working on something. And here it comes. Oh my God! It's another record player, almost identical to the last one. That's true. Okay. Ugh. I shouldn't be picking things up with my uh, sore arm, sore shoulder. Anyway, Admiral record player, tone and volume, laid out exactly like the last record player that we did, which was called a uh, Symphonic, I think was the name on the last one. And if we look inside, elevate this camera a bit. If we look inside here. Whoops, 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 triple whoops. And what do we see? We see exactly the same record player as the last one. So, although it's got a different name on the front, it's really virtually identical to the last one I worked on. Let me turn it this way here. There we are. Maybe I can just move this back a little bit. Okay, so this has already been examined a bit. The uh, cartridge is dead. Uh, any original cartridge in a record player like this is almost certain to be dead. Okay. There's the replacement, same as the last one. 
Oops. So part of what we'll be doing is mounting this. But let's plug this in and give it a go and see what it does here. Okay, so... My power supply is still on an isolation transformer. In fact, you can see it right here, sitting right here. Now, that's quite warm. Even with no load, this thing pulls a fairly heavy current, probably a reactive current flowing through here. This thing's actually surprisingly warm. So we're going to apply the power in restricted form first. There we go nothing has happened. That's a good idea. Let's just let it sit here for a minute and make sure the uh, amplifier does not come on. Okay, so good. So off is off. So we'll put this on and we'll see what happens. Here we go. Motor spinning. Hmm. No drive on the. Uh... Let's try a speed control. Let's see if it... Speed control feels a little a little free to me. Oh, yeah, how do you like that? Seventy-eight. 45. So, could be a spring is off. Um, just a missing spring may, may cause this kind of problem. Oh, look at that. There it goes. Yeah, I, th I bet you it's the spring. It's either the spring is sprung or it's completely off. Now, I hear the amplifier. Not bad. Um, I don't think you can hear it at all on the microphone, so there's no hum. Very good. Now let's check the uh, input here to the amplifier. What I'll do is I'll feed in a signal. Well, actually, yeah, we've already checked the cartridge and it doesn't work. Let me, using me as the source of the signal, I'm just trying to make contact with the wires here. The red one. Uh, huh. Pull this off. I'd like to pull it off. <sighs> wow. Hmm. I expect to hear a loud hum when I do this. It's a little odd. Wow. Let's get these wires off here. a little more what I wanted to hear, a bit of humming. So, seems to me the amplifier is working just fine. Volume might be low, but we can't tell until we put the new cartridge in. And obviously some mechanical problems are, uh, are happening here. Yeah, interesting. 
interesting observation here. Let me just swing the camera up. Okay, that's my current limiting bulb. Generally, I wouldn't expect this to be glowing with such a light load here from the record player, but it could be the motor is actually supplying a load. Let's see if we can we'll shut the motor off. Well, the whole thing's going to go off, so we can't really shut the motor off without shutting the whole player off. Oh, that's interesting. Did you see that? Keep your eye on the light bulb. And I'm going to stop the uh, platter from turning here. Just so I can just get both that stuff on camera. Okay. So I'm just going to stop it here with my hand. Watch the light. So you get brighter. And back down again once it gets spinning. So that's typical. Any motor, when you block it and stop the motor from turning, um, the motor will draw more current. That's a nifty thing about motors. The, the more load you put on them, the harder they work to push it. It's really almost like a miracle in a way. Now how come this thing is working now? It's still slipping. 45, 78. Hmm. Probably just do the general maintenance under here. And we're going to be back in business with this record player, I'm pretty sure. So that's what we'll attend to next. We'll uh, we'll do the mechanics, get all that working, and then we'll deal with the cartridge after that. So, still got time. Let's continue. Okay, so it's unplugged. This little guy may not be obvious how he comes out. So you have to rotate it just a little bit. This feels like it's covered in oil or grease or something. And I gotta pick it out of there. have grease all over it. There we go. So, so yeah, that's just held in by these little washers here. In this uh, key arrangement you can see it here. So that's why you need to rotate this a bit. Now, why is this thing just sopping with oil? Yeah. Somebody must have really doused it. Or they applied too much oil and then uh, it has run out. So there's almost always uh, one of these C clips down here locking that platter in. So just pop it off. Pop it off and don't let it go flying. This should just lift straight up and off. It's a little painful. <laughs> that does not want to come off easy. Just turn and lift. inside right in here to see if there's any wear or anything about it that looks unusual because that's where this this little wheel runs runs on the inside of the rim but this doesn't look like it's got much mileage on it at all really it looks just about brand new to me a lot of oil Okay, 
Now, I'm going to turn it back on, and I'm going to watch the motor here, and I'm going to squeeze it a bit to uh, slow it. You know what, that, that turns really nicely. It's not even worth testing. It turns really nicely. Okay. So I don't think there's a problem there. Ah, this is the problem. Now, there should be a spring pulling this. Oh, maybe there is a spring, but it's just become very, very stuck. In fact, I can feel it loosening up. So we'll have to look underneath for the spring, but I, I think the spring is missing. Hard to say. It's definitely too sticky, though. This should move very, very freely. Yeah. Okay, we'll have to get underneath to, to see that. Let's deal with this guy next. This is a bit of the brain power uh, inside the record player. It controls the movement of the arm inside this raceway underneath. You'll see when I take it apart, unless you've watched many, many of my videos where I do these record players. They're all pretty similar. Another C-clip to get off. Yikes. some of my favorite tools in a, my mobile toolbox here. They're not in my shop right here. There we are. Now just before I lift that race off there. This piece here, this this piece here, which I'll show you closer later, this is really critical that this be as loose and freely moving as possible. It should not be greased up. You can put some very light oil on it if you want it, but it shouldn't even need that. And I've had some of these get into real trouble where they uh, fuse to the uh, pivot shaft here. They fuse solid really hard to get off and, but this has to be loose this isn't loose enough in my view it's close but I'm trying to make that a little better so let's pull that one off not with that tool Working without my favorite tools. Terrible. There we go. And it didn't go flying. These clips tend to go flying when you take them off. Now, in some cases, getting this off is really, really difficult. Let's see. Oh, it's easy as can be. So. I think somebody's done maintenance on this. I'll take that back. No, I don't think it's been maintained. So, this piece here, which moves back and forth, moves the arm. See the arm go up and down? And that piece is moved by traveling in this slot as this wheel is turned around. And the wheel is geared to the platter this gear here in the platter and then this little tiny uh, motor spindle is spinning this wheel which is driving the platter which is then driving the mechanism which is driving this and there's quite a gearing ratio there so if all this is working right over here there's a fair bit of power available to drive this thing to, to, to spin this around and drive it Typically, uh, it's just like this one, the grease gives up the ghost here. You know what, this isn't all that bad, there's just not much grease left, but uh, it's actually uh, still pretty greasy. Hmm. 
another problem that's really common is this piece here actually has a rotating part on it. Now this one's not rotating. This little sleeve should rotate around the spindle. That helps it travel around uh, inside the raceway. So we're going to have to get that guy moving too. Once we get all these things moving, the mechanism will work a lot better. Let's just see if I can... Yeah, the grease is really not bad at all in here. Just wipe up the old stuff. Get my uh, favorite salt right there, which is alcohol. Uh oh Without alcohol. And a reload. So as I've said many times before, I like alcohol, just ordinary rubbing alcohol. And because it's uh, Pretty innocuous. It's not poisonous unless you drink it. Whoa. Stuff evaporates, so if you spill it, it's gone a moment later. So I'm just going to put a drop right on the top there. Oop, that's a bit more than a drop, wasn't it? I don't know if you can see that or not in the camera. And that should loosen this wheel up. I just, I just force it a bit. This is greasy and I can't get a good grip on it. I'm going to put a tool on it, but I don't want to squeeze too hard. I really don't want to mark it up in some way. Didn't take much to get it going though. There it goes. Yeah, now it's turning. The alcohol does a good job of waking up old grease and getting it uh, going again, but the alcohol is very volatile, so it's going to leave. And the uh, grease, I think, will just turn into glue again. So I'm going to put a little light oil, a little oil on that, just a regular oil. One drop right on the top. There we go. That's about all you need to do to that. Now this thing. Clean out the old stuff. Yeah, some of these are so stuck on their shaft that if you try to turn them, you'll start turning the shaft, which isn't supposed to turn. You'll loosen the shaft up, and you'll get the false impression that it's turning on the shaft when in fact it's still stuck to the shaft. I've had one of these I had worked on for like half an hour. I'm sure it's one of my videos would show it. I'm sure I videoed it. Half an hour trying to get this off. And the secret in the end was heating it up quite a bit with a blowtorch. I'll take a closer look at this piece here. It's two pieces of metal and they're sitting on each other. They don't seem to want to move independently as well as they should. I'm going to throw a little alcohol in there.
a little bit better. This is the mechanism that detects the uh, end of the record. Which I won't explain how it does it because I'm not sure I can explain exactly how it does it. But, uh, actually, this slid off the shaft so easy. I shouldn't worry too much about cleaning the old stuff out. Get some more grease. And I'm just using a run of the mill uh, automobile bearing grease. It's a little heavy. You could probably use uh, white grease on this, no problem. I've certainly seen it. I just don't have any here in my shop right now. There we go. Okay. Throw this guy back on top. No, first, first, before we put this on. Let's do the actual bearing down here. There's usually a washer on top. This is the area that uh, sort of home, say homeowners, uh, people who aren't about to take this apart to clean it up and fix it up, they tend to, to shoot oil uh, right down into the platter. That's probably why this one was so oily. Let's see, we'll pick the, uh, there's a ball bearing, a ball bearing, I don't know what to call it, a ball bearing thing here. Okay, so I'm examining the grease. The grease has gone a little thick on this and it's not much left in it. Let me poke it a bit here. Well, it's not the worst I've ever seen, but it's really not terribly good. So we'll pick out as much of it as, oops, as much as we can. Yeah, this stuff's really not that bad. I might say something about how this thing's been stored. And that it's been stored in a very favorable way. Exactly what that is, I don't know. Generally, they're in the back of people's closets. Okay. And we'll reload this. Some new grease. I don't really like using q-tips for this, you know, because I think q-tips give up uh, some of their fibers. I really don't want fibers in here. That's uh, pretty gooped up. Throw it back on. Take the washer. Just got some grease on my fingers here. I'll put a little grease on it. Down it goes. And the reason I wanted to do that uh, before I put this raceway on is sometimes you can't get at these with this once this uh, raceway, that's what I'm calling this thing anyway, once this is back on. Put it back on. I'm going to look at the raceway and pick the outside part here because that's roughly where this pin is. Usually, you got to fiddle with it to get it to settle right down, including pushing that pin in. There we go.
degrease my fingers here. see that there's any grease or contamination on this part. Throw it back in. It's moving very freely on its pin there. Start putting these clips back in before I forget. That's a very common thing. Get the whole record player back together and then look down and you got two of these clips, C-clips still sitting. Okay. This one. These things fly going on and off, so there we go. Very good. Now we're gonna have to lift the whole uh, record player out and flip it over to. Uh, to get at uh, the problem here. This is the main problem with this record player, this piece right here, which should which should move very freely, but it doesn't. So let's take this out here. Sometimes these are easier to get out than you might imagine. <laughs> that down before I I don't know if that helped. And sometimes they're harder to get out than you might imagine. <laughs> locking screws are already out on this. Oh, okay, so we can just lift the whole board up. That's a little easier. See that, eh? See that black clip here? Should be one of those over here. Maybe it's falling in the bottom here. And that probably indicates somebody was pretty rough with it. Guess what? There it is. So we're going to pop that clip back on there. Ouch. So close. It's a question of whether the clip's going to go on or my thumbnail is going to come off first. Here. Come on. There we go. Okay. Not that that was having any effect on anything, but it's good to always have things the way they're supposed to be. Now, here's the mechanism that's a little sticky. Okay, let's take a closer look at it here. Ooh, very 
raise my hand a little high there. That hurt. Okay. So this should all be moving very, very freely. Okay, so we see that this spring is what's driving it back. This spring has really got no power. And we have another. That's the speed control there. That's moving pretty good. I think that's pretty dried up. I think that's what's going on there. Where's my good friend, Mr. Alcohol? Oh, don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> see, the thing about alcohol is if you spill it all over the place, it really doesn't matter. Just see the thing move on its own there? Look at that. Sorry about some bad camera work there. So again, this alcohol will dry away and we'll get right back to the sticky condition it was in. So I'm going to try to remove whatever I can here. Not much spring power in there. Put a little bit of light oil, or just oil on that. And again, I don't want to put too much. How much, how much is too much? Very good. Okay, so I think we got that mechanism sorted out. Now the speed adjuster is moving really nicely here. But it's dry as a bone in there. So I'm going to put some of this heavier grease in there. Half an hour. Okay, so let's uh, set this upright again. Okay. Clip, clip, clip. I never took that clip off, or this one. Sometimes these wheels are a little sticky. Now that's just fine. That's good. Idler wheel. Sometimes the rubber on these dries out. Just feeling it with my nail. I think this is pretty good. I think it's really quite good. So we'll put the platter back in. We'll just put a wee bit of grease on here, on these gears.
Okay, throw this guy back on. Okay, you gotta make sure this thing is settled all the way down. There it goes. Sometimes the idler wheel. Oh, I see my video is stalled. Well, I made it pretty good before I got a stall. So, this would be a good time for me to stop and uh, eat my dinner. Sure, then we'll come back. I, I know the audio is still recording, but the video has stopped, which is a problem I'm having. Um, but we'll stop here for now.